Hey everyone, Alvin Blocks here. In this Roblox scripting tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own awesome egg hatching system where if you click on the dispenser, it will take your money away and then the egg will expand and hatch to reveal the pet which you selected. And in future videos, I'll be showing you how to save your pets and create an inventory so you'll be able to equip different ones and also the pet will follow you around. So keep watching. Don't forget, if you want to support my channel at no extra cost, you can use the star code ALVINBLOCKS when buying Robux or Roblox Premium. Thank you. So firstly, I need to show you how to create pets. And I found a really good kit, which are full of under 100 um, quality, simulator quality pets. And if you go to the link, which I've put in the description here, you'll be able to go and take this pack and you'll be able to insert it into your game through the toolbox. So I'm going to go click on the four squares, click on my models and click on pet pack. Shout out to Lua, Barry Good and Jufei123 for publishing these models for free and allowing us to use them. What you'll need to do is pick a couple of these pets to use. So I'm going to go into the pet pack and I'm just going to pick a few out. Okay, right click and copy them all. I'm going to delete the pet pack. and I'm going to paste them into the game. Now you can create your own pets if you want. It's quite simple. All you need to do is get a few parts together, make it look like a pet. For example, if I just make a really quick basic one here, right? Imagine this is like a bee or something. What you'd need to do is um, just group them all together, and then you'd need to I'll just give it a name, and you need to ins you need to choose one of the parts to be like the main part. And I'm going to insert a weld constraint, not a weld. A weld constraint into it and for each other part well firstly you need to set part zero to be the part that the weld is inside of and part one can be any of the other parts but you need to have a weld constraint between the main part and every other part so make sure that you've set up a weld constraint for all of the parts in the, uh, which are linked to all of the parts so if you've done that correctly when you select them all and hold down alt you should see this green line and that's showing that this middle part here has a weld that's welded to this part and this part so that when they're moving they won't fall apart so when this falls to the ground the parts aren't gonna aren't, they're not gonna separate because they're welded together now so when you've done that uh, you need to insert a hitbox so a hitbox is a part which will cover the entire space of the pet so you can see when I click on one of these models you can see there's a blue outline the hitbox is going to cover that entire space. And the reason we need a hitbox is because when we um, code the pets, well, we need to tell it, we, the pet needs to know the direction to, f to face when it's moving. And what it will do is it will take the front surface of the hitbox. Now, if you insert a part and you go to the surface properties and click on front surface, you'll see that it's this surface here, the yellow outlined surface. So, uh, we're going to put a hitbox into the pet. We're going to make the front surface be facing the uh, pet's face, so it's looking this way. And that way, the the pet will be facing um, forwards in the same direction as our character. So, what you need to do for each pet is insert a part, name it hitbox, and make sure that it is not anchored and that can collide is is unselected. So anchored and can collide are both false and then move the part so that it's in the pet and root and scale it down so it's only covering the pet so it's covering the whole of the pet like this okay when you've done that it doesn't have to be exact just make sure you're covering the pet so you can't see it so the block is covering it and when you've done that set the transparency to one and then drag this hitbox into the pet's model. So this is the the um, this is the bear. So I'm going to drag the hitbox into the bear. Then you need to change its primary part to the hitbox. Okay. And in this pet kit, most of the pets already have um, weld constraints in them. Okay. Uh, this specific one seems to have normal welds. So um, what I will do is I will just convert them all to weld constraints. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to get rid of the previous welds, but inside the hitbox, I'm going to add those weld constraints. Part zero will be the hitbox, and then I'm just going to set part one 
to all of the other parts and I'm going to keep duplicating the weld constraint until all of the other parts have been welded to the hitbox. So that's going to be four weld constraints to weld the other four parts to the hitbox. And now this um, this pet here, the bear, is ready to go. So you need to do that for all of the other pets that you want in your game. Okay, and I'm going to skip now to the next part of the video. Remember, it's really important that when you're doing this, the hitbox part, you need to make sure that its front surface is facing the same way as the pet's face, right? Um, otherwise, it won't be looking in that direction. It, it might be backwards or looking in a different way. So you need to make sure the hitbox front surface is looking the same way as its face, okay? Now I'm using some pets that I created earlier instead because I already added the hitbox to them. Uh, next what you need to do is we're going to insert a script into server script service and we're just going to quickly make a leader stats folder and a cache value so that we can get a leaderboard and some cache to use later on when we buy the uh, pets. Okay so this is a very simple script. All we've got to do is have a player added event which is going to fire when a new player joins the game. We've got the argument and that is the player uh, Roblox has given us the player that will join the game, so whatever we do to this player will be done to whoever joins the game. So we're inserting a folder into the player, we're calling it leader stats, it has to be called leader stats if you want it to show up on the leaderboard. And then inside of that folder we're inserting a int value because it takes a number, an integer, and we're calling it cash. We're giving it a value of 10,000 to begin with, so that should cover enough uh, cash for us to buy the pets. And we're putting it inside of that leader stats folder. So if you now play the game, you will see that we have the leaderboard showing up here and now we also have the leader stats folder in our player and the cache so we're able to edit our cache and that will take effect on the leaderboard but just remember guys when you're changing the amount of cache you have you have to change it on the server so go to server mode and change it there because uh, your changes will only take effect if you edit it on the server okay so now i'm going to put all of these pets into a folder in the replicated storage so click on the plus click on folder and i'm going to set this folder's name to pets. Then I'm just going to select all of the pets that I have and put them into the replicated storage. Uh, also I forgot to mention make sure that the primary part of all of your pets is the hitbox else they will not work. This is because we need to position the model and you can only position a model if you set its primary part. Next we need to set up a module script. Now this is where we're going to keep all the information about the different pets rarities. So whether a pet is legendary, rare, common, uncommon etc. So insert a module script into the server script service. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this uh, module variable to pet module, just because it gives a little bit more description as to what this module is. And if you're not too familiar with module scripts, I'll just quickly summarize them. They hold code and we can execute the code from other scripts. So when we return, we can require the module from other scripts. And when we do that, the contents of this pet module table will get sent to that script. So anything we put in the pet module will get sent to a script we call it from, because we're probably going to be calling um, functions to choose random pets from other scripts. For example, when we click on the click detector in our dispenser, which we are yet to create. So inside of this pet module um, table, I want to insert a uh, another table, and that table will have a list of all of the different rarities and which uh, pets are a part of that rarity of each rarity so what we can say is um, pet module dot pets equals and then a blank table like this and because I've said pet module at the start is going to put that table called pets inside the pet module now I'm going to insert four different rarities okay so I'm going to have legendary and you need to put them in square brackets uh, also in um, speech marks and each um, this is called an index so um, a key sorry and we have to have we have to give a value to each key so the value in this case is going to be another table and inside of that table there we're going to put in uh, all the object paths of the pets that are legendary so for now I'm just going to do a, a semicolon and you have to separate them with a semicolon or a comma I'm going to do a semicolon and I'm going to just copy this and paste in for my other rarities. Now if you wanted to have more rarities than I do, because I'm only going to have legendary, rare, uh, uncommon and common, just feel free to add another 
a uh, few rarities you know you can have as many as you like just change the name to something different maybe like um ultra rare doesn't matter the order also doesn't matter you could have legendary at the bottom so inside of here inside of each table we need to write the path to the pets so i'm going to expand each um, table a little bit just so we have some more space to write our pets in there and so for example if i wanted the b to be a legendary pet I would put its path in this table. So I would just say game.replicatedStorage.pets.b, okay? And just put it in there. Now, now our B is going to be recognized as a legendary pet. So I'm gonna do this for all of the other pets in the folder. Now make sure that you have a semicolon at the end of each uh, object path as well to separate them from the others. I also have to mention if your pet name has a space in it, such as this Lava Lord, then you need to do square brackets like this. Don't put a dot, just do square brackets, then do speech marks and put the name of your pet in there, Lava Lord. That way you can have a space and it won't cause any problems. Okay, now that we've got all of our pets in their, in their respective rarities, then we need to now um, set up another table which tells the script how rare each rarity should be. So what are the chances of each rarity being picked? So to do this, we're going to use something called uh, weighted selection. And what that means is we can give a number to each um, rarity. And the higher the number, the more chance of it being selected. So to do this, we're going to create another table. And it's going to be inside the pet module. So pet module, and we're, we're going to call it rarities. So pet module dot rarities equals and then another blank table. Now, because <clears throat> in this table, we need to have the same... Uh, rarity names as we have put here so use the same names okay so we're just going to expand this table and we're going to put the rarity names in there so legendary uh, equals and i'm just going to set them to zero for now so the so same thing as we've done before we need to have the name in square brackets uh, in speech marks as well and it's going to be equal to a number so we'll just put it at zero for now with a semicolon at the end so just copy and paste uh, this in four times. I'm going to, I'm doing it four times because I've got four rarities and change the names to each of your rarities. So uncommon and common. Okay. The order again does not matter. Now, what I'm going to do is the rarities are going to be out of a hundred. So that, so the total weight, sorry, the total weight, because this is random weighted, this is weighted selection. We have a total weight and weight is going to be distributed throughout these four rarities. So we can give, um, we've got 100 total weight, okay? And let's give common, um, let's give it 50 weight, okay? And let's give uncommon 25 weight. So we have 25% left to distribute. So if there's a 50% chance of getting common, and there's going to be a 25% of getting uncommon, then we've got 25% uh, weight or percentage left over to use here. So let's give... Um, let's give 15% to rare, okay, that gives us 90, and we'll give 10% to, in fact, no, we'll give, we'll give 20, we'll give 30, we'll give, we'll give 30 to uncommon, so 30% chance for uncommon, uh, so that leaves 20 left over for these two, so we'll give 15 for rare, and 5 for legendary, okay, so the way I've set this up is because the total weight, the total sum of these numbers here is now 100, this means that there's a 5% chance of getting a legendary, 15% chance of rare, 30% chance of uncommon, and 50% chance of getting a common, okay? Now, what we can do is very soon, we can choose a random number between 1 and 100, and then we can loop through all of the rarities and keep adding the weight on to a counter, which starts at 0, and we can stop uh, when the uh, counter is greater than the random number which we've selected. And when we do that, we can stop at the current uh, rarity, and that will give us the chosen rarity for our pet. Okay, it sounds confusing, but I will go over it with you very soon. So now we've got the rarity set up, let's create a function which is gonna select a random pet for us. So we can say pet module, because this function, again, is gonna be part of our pet module table that gets returned to a script when we require the module pet module dot choose random pet equals function 
it's going to be equal to a function and add an ending at the bottom like this. Now, what we need to do is we need to select that random number because we've got 100 total weight. So we need to choose a number between 1 and that total weight of 100. So local random number equals math.random 1, 100. So 1 is the start number, 100 is the end number. It's going to pick a, a random number in between 1 and 100. So what we'll do is we'll create a for loop to loop through this rarities table. So for rarity, comma weight in pairs, and we're going to loop through the pet module dot rarities table, do. Now because this is a dictionary, uh, the rarity is going to be the name here, so legendary, rare, uncommon, common, and the weight is going to be the value, so the, the weight here, the number of weight. And what we're going to do is every time we loop through the rarity, we're going to, we're going to have a counter. I'm going to call this local counter equals, and it's going to be set to zero at the start. And every time we loop through a rarity, we're going to increase the counter. So we're going to do counter equals counter plus weight. So every time it loops through, it's going to increase the counter by this weight value here. And every time we do that, we want to check if the random number which we've generated, uh, which is between 1 and 100, we want to check if that random number is going to be less than or equal to the counter. And if it is, then we're going to stop at that rarity and we're going to choose a random pet of that rarity. Now, this sounds confusing, but if you think about it, it works. Because if we have, if a random number gets chosen and it's... Um, equal to or less than 5, right? So if you get chosen 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, then that's a 5% chance. If any of those numbers get selected, then that would give you a, a, a legendary. Because if we were to uh, begin and go into the for loop and we add the first weight to the counter, which is 5, okay, it just so happens that it is 5, then we would see that the random number, which is either, let's say it's 3, for example, it is less than the counter of 5. And it doesn't matter if it went through the common first because it would see that the counter would become 50 and it would still be less than 50. So it would go to the next one, which would be 30. So you can see it would still be less and less and less. So whichever number gets picked, this for loop here will determine the rarity that you're on because as soon as it gets the, the random number is lower than the counter, then it's going to stop and use the current rarity that we've chosen, okay? So when it does find the rarity, uh, or the first rarity that is um, lower than the counter, uh, sorry, where the random number is lower than the counter, then what we will do is we need to get the rarity table out of the pets table here. So what this has done is it has chosen a rarity for us. Legendary, rare, uncommon, or common, okay? Now, what we now need to do, because we know the name of the rarity is stored here, because it's the name of the subtable, the, well, not the subtable, but the index. It's the index name here of the weight. We know that this rarity name, we can get the table out of the pets table, okay? So we can say um, local rarity table equals pet module dot pets, and we can just get the name, we can get the table from its name, using the rarity variable here. So now that we've got that table, it could be this one, this one, this one, or this one, we know that it has got uh, the, the object paths inside of it. So what we need to do now is just choose a random pet out of that table. So local chosen pet equals rarity table, and we can just get a random index out of that. So math.random, we're choosing a random number between one and the total amount of objects in there. So hashtag rarity table. So if there are five pets in this table, hashtag rarity table would be five and it would pick a random number between one and five and it would get that index out of the table. So it's chosen a random pet from our rarity table. All we now need to do is return chosen pet. And whenever we do call this choose random pet function, the chosen pet will get returned, it will be stored as the variable that called the, called the function, as you will see very soon, and we'll be able to, um, you know, put that pet in their inventory in the future, or, you know, reveal something, because we've now got that pet. So I'm just going to go over what we've just done. So firstly, we created a table called pets, and inside we had subtables for each uh, rarity, and inside of there, we've put the object paths, or the references, to each pet, okay? 
Then what we did is we created a second table called rarities and we set up a weight, a total weight of 100, so it could be a percentage because um, it's out of 100 and we gave each uh, category uh, its own weight, its own percentage chance, okay? And then we set up a function which would generate a random number between 1 and 100 and depending on that number we would use this for loop to determine what uh, rarity it came under. So uh, the, the basically the way to see it is if the random number was uh, 98 for example what we'd do is we'd enter the for loop the counter would be zero to begin with and then we'd add on the first weight which is the legendary one so the weight would be five but 98 is not less than five so we'd have to go around again and add on the next weight which would be 15 taking the total counter up to 20 so is 98 less than 20? No, it's not. We'll go around again. We're going to add on the next weight, which is 30. Then we're going to ask ourselves again, is 98 less than uh, 50? And no, it's not. And then we're going to go around again, add on the last weight, and it's going to be common. So it's going to add on 50. And then we'll say, okay, is 98 less than 100? Ah, uh, yes, there we go. So the current rarity that we're on is common. So we're going to stop there and we're going to give them a common pet. Whereas if it was a lower number, such as 2, we would say, okay, is so we'll add on the first counter, which is 5, so the counter is now 5, is 2 less than 5? Oh, yes, it is. Um, so they obviously got lucky, they got a number less than 5, so we're going to give them a legendary pet, because straight away the counter was 5, but they had a number less than that. If that makes it any clearer, hopefully it does. Right, now we're going to set up our dispenser and the click detector on there, so we can actually buy the pet. So you can build your own dispenser. I've got one here, which I'm just going to copy and paste into the game. Here we are. And inside of here, I've just got an egg mesh. You can easily find those by going to the marketplace, clicking on meshes and searching for an egg. You'll be able to find that there. And I've just put it inside of the dispenser. Now, inside of here, what I have done, in fact, I will show you again. I've just created a little um, you know, part, which I'm gonna put some text on. Inside of it, I'm going to insert a surface GUI and I'm going to, inside of there, insert a text label. Then I'm going to just find the surface which is facing me. So it is the top surface. I'm going to go into the surface GUI and set the uh, surface to the top. Yours might be different. And I'm going to set the size of this text label to 1, 0, 1, 0. So it takes up the entire part. Then I'm going to set text scale to be true, and I can change the font if I like. And I can change the text to say egg, and a few spaces to get it on the next line, 500 cash. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to insert a click detector inside of here, and then I'm going to insert a script. The click detector allows it to get clicked because it's a part. Right, then I'm just going to set up a very simple mouse click event. So script.parent.clickdetector.mouse click, colon connect, function, and inside of here we're going to say player, because player is the argument that Roblox automatically passes to this function, which will tell us the name of the player who clicked the click detector. Make sure you add on a end and closing bracket here, and now what we need to do is just check if the player has enough money to buy the cash. So we can say if player.leaderstats dot cash dot value if you named your currency something different you'd change cash to whatever you've, you've named it um, if it is greater than or equal to 500 that's how much i want this to be to to cost if you want it to cost something different change this number so if they have enough money then we need to deduct the money from their account so player dot leader stats dot cash dot value we're going to set it to its current value take away 500 okay now if you wanted to, you could set up a variable called cost and set it here. And then if you change the 500s here to cost, you don't have to change it once. So now what we need to do is choose the random pet now that they've bought it. So we need to require our pet module. So we can say, I'm going to give it a name as well. I'm going to name it pet module in the server script service. And then I'm going to say local pet module equals require game.server script service colon wait for child pet module okay make sure you add the require in there and you have the closing bracket on the end that is 
crucial. So it downloads, kind of downloads the functions and the tables which we declared in the in the module. So we can now call the choose random pet function by saying, well, we firstly, because we're returning from the function, the chosen pet, we need to have this as a variable. So we can pick whatever is it returned up and we can use it again. So local pet equals pet module dot choose random pet. Okay, like this with the two brackets on the end. So that it's because it's a function and we have to call it. So what we can then do is print out pet dot name dot dot selected. So it will print out the name of the selected pet. And if it does, we will know that it worked. So let's go into the game and see if it works. Let's open up the output. And oh, we just need to run over to the box. Let's click it. Oh, we've got an error. OK, no need to worry. Let's just go into the pet module because it's saying serve script service dot pet module on line 48. Um, oh, whoops, my bad. We forgot to say pets. I accidentally made a typo and I said pet module dot pet. But we have to say pet module dot pets because that's the name of the table. Let's try once more. I'm going to go and play here so we don't have to walk over there again. And at this time, if we click on it, you can see bear selected. So it selected a pet and it took my money away. We do it again. It's taken away another 500. So it's working perfectly. Brilliant. OK, so now I'm going to show you how to make a really awesome reveal so that when you buy the egg, it will like as if hatch the egg. OK, so what I've done is I've built a studio. Now, all this is is just a room with um, pink walls and ceiling. And inside of it, I've, I've called the model studio, by the way. Um, because it's kind of like a movie studio or a set. So we've got loads of pink walls in here. We've got three invisible parts which have spotlights in them. So, sorry, surface lights, which are pointing light up in the top face so that its uh, light is coming up and you can see the egg. Uh, we've also got a cam part you can see there. Now that's where we're going to position the camera to be. Now you can add your own cam part. Just click on parts, you know, add one in, drag it in and um, call it cam part with a capital C and capital P. And make sure that the front surface though, which is this one, is facing towards the egg. Because when we set the C-frame of the camera, it will be looking in the direction of the front surface. I've also got a um, confetti part with some particle emitters inside. And when you enable them, they will just spew out confetti. This was actually a free model. So just search for confetti and I'm sure you'll find one. And uh, then we've got the egg. I've just got a mesh of the egg and we'll be able to script this so that the egg gets bigger. And then when it eventually reaches a certain size, then we can make it explode. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll spawn in the pet uh, around about here. And then we'll, del we'll make the egg go transparent so that we can um, make the, the pet appear. And we'll also have an explosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this studio underneath the map so we can't really see it. Make sure you put it underneath the base plate because the base plate is quite thick. You might actually get it stuck in the base plate. So move it underneath the base plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a remote event in the replicated storage. I'm going to call this remote event hatch egg. Okay. And what we'll do is in the, in the script inside the egg dispenser, when we choose our random pet, I'm going to say uh, game dot... Uh, replicated storage dot hatch dot hatch egg colon fire client and I'm going to put the player inside of here what this is going to do is it's going to fire the remote event for um, the specific player who bought the egg and then what we can do we can set up a local script in the uh, start GUI which will pick up when this remote event gets fired and then we can do all the cool coding for the camera etc to reveal the egg so what we'll do is we firstly need to create a variable for the camera. So local camera equals game dot workspace dot camera. Then what we need to do is set up the remote event handler. So game dot replicated storage dot hatch egg dot on client event colon connect function. And if you drop a line, you should get this end added in here. So when we fire the remote event, to the client, we need to also send the pet, which they've just chosen. So because we returned the chosen pet to this variable, I can just do comma and then send the pet over to the, um, so it can be picked up in the local script. So we can have an argument for the pet. 
So we now know the pet that they have bought. So all we need to do now is for well, firstly position the camera to be in the studio. So I'm going to create a second variable for that studio. So local studio equals game dot workspace dot studio. If you're building your own studio, then make sure you name it studio or something else. And if you do name it something else, change it here. So how do we set the camera to be looking at the cam part? Well, it's very simple. Firstly, we need to set the camera's camera type to be scriptable. That just allows us to edit the camera's C frame with a script. So camera dot camera type equals enum. So an enum is a predefined list uh, dot camera type dot uh, scriptable. When you've done that, we can set the camera's C frame to be looking at that part. So we can say camera dot C frame equals studio dot cam part dot C frame. That's why I told you to name the cam part cam part. So now that we've done that, we can make the egg get bigger. We can do this with a for loop. So for I equals one, uh, for, we'll count up to 50, we'll do it 50 times and we'll increase by one each time. Um, and then inside of here, we can just make the egg get bigger. So we could say studio dot egg dot size equals studio dot egg dot size. So we want to get its current size, but then add on a vector three value so that we can add on um, 0.1. So we can say 0.1, 0.1, 0.1. .1. And that's going to increase the egg size by 0.1 studs on each axis 50 times. But each time we'll have a short wait of 0.01 seconds so we can actually see it getting bigger. Now, what I'll do is I'll add a wait here of around 1.5 seconds just so that we can actually see the egg before it starts to get bigger. And any code that's underneath this will only run once the for loop is finished. So by now, the the egg will be huge and it will be ready to hatch. So to hatch it, we could make a massive explosion. So we can say local explosion equals instance.new. We're going to insert an explosion object, a Roblox explosion. Uh, and we can say explosion dot blast, uh, blast radius equals 10. That's how big the explosion will be. So 10 studs explosion dot blast pressure we want the blast pressure to be zero so it doesn't cause any damage we just want the effect uh, explosion dot position we need to position the explosion to be where the egg is so studio dot egg dot position we then need to set the explosion type and again we don't want it to cause any damage or craters in the map so explosion dot explosion type equals enum again enum is a data type which allows us to select from a predefined list uh, so explosion type dot no craters because it can either be craters or no craters. So we want no craters and then explosion dot destroy joint radius percent. Again, we want to set that to zero so it doesn't do any damage or destroys any joints or anything that are already in the map. So this way, the explosion won't do any damage, but we will see the visual effect of it. So we can then parent the explosion. We can put it inside of the egg. So explosion dot parent equals studio dot egg. And then we can set the X transparency to be one. So studio dot egg dot transparency transparency equals one. When it's one, it's uh, completely transparent. You won't be able to see it. And that way it just makes the effect that it blew up, even though we want it back in a few seconds to go back to normal size, etc. So now that the egg has been hidden, we can clone our pet into the studio. So we can say local pet clone. We'll make a variable for it for the cloned version equals pet colon clone and what we want to do is we want to anchor the pet now i think i forgot to mention this earlier but if you go into your pets in replicated storage just make sure that all of them are not anchored because if they're anchored they won't move with your character but they will also fall if they're not being if their position isn't being set and we'll have a script that will set their position but when they're in the studio they'll just fall to the ground so we need to set all of the parts inside of it to be anchored. So to do this, we can have a for loop that will loop through all of the children of the pet clone. So pet clone colon get children for IV in pairs. I is the index. We don't need to worry about that. V is going to be each individual part or object. Firstly, we need to check that it's an actual part. So we say if V is a base part, because it could include a mesh part, normal part, etc. But these are all base parts. So if it is a part, then we'll set its anchored property to be true. And the next thing we need to do is set the transparent, sorry, not the transparency, set the confetti in the studio to go off. 
So if you don't have any confetti in your studio, don't worry about this. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a for loop that will loop through all of the particle emitters inside of the studio. So if we look in the studio here, in my confetti, all of the children are particle emitters. We can just check to see if that child really is a particle emitter. And if it is, I'll set its enabled property to be true. And when I do that, when I do set the um, property to be true, then it starts spewing out confetti. So if we go back here to the local script, the next thing we need to do, now that we've set the pets anchored properties to be, um, so it's anchored and fully anchored and ready to go, we can now parent it to the studio. We are parenting it last so that it doesn't start falling or anything. We need to know that it's totally anchored before we do that. And the last thing to do is to set its uh, primary part C frame. So we can actually position the pet to be in the studio. So pet clone colon set primary part C frame. We need to position this to be in around the same location as the egg. So to do this, we can create a new C frame, C frame dot new. And inside of here, inside of these brackets, let me just make it a little bit easier to see. Inside of the C frame dot new brackets, we want to say studio dot egg dot position. So we're positioning it where the egg was, but we also need it to be looking and facing the cam part. So the second argument in a C frame will tell the um, script where it should be looking at. So where it should be positioned and facing. So we want it to face the studio dot cam part dot position. We want it to face the camera. So that will make it face the camera and be in the right location. Next, I'm going to animate the camera so it bounces and looks directly. It starts to zoom in at the pet. So to do this, we need to set up a tween using the tween service. So let's go ahead and add the tween service at the top. Local tween service equals game colon get service tween service. Okay. Now, when we've got this, we can set up some properties for our tween. We need to give it the tween info. So local tween info equals, and it's going to be tween info dot new because tween info is a data type. Um, which contains lots of data about a tween. So the information we have to give it is the time. So time, the easing style, direction, whether it's going in or out, the repeat counts, whether it reverses, and delay time. Okay, it, so the time is how long it's going to animate for. So I'm going to say two seconds. The style is one from a predefined list, any of these. So it could be linear if it just keeps going animating at the same speed, but I want it to be bounce. So it bounces into the pet. The direction is either in or out. Um, this doesn't really matter. It's just about the easing style and how it plays. Easing direction for me though, I want it to be out because it's animating outwards. The repeat count, I don't want it to repeat once it's done. Uh, and whether it reverses, I don't want it to reverse. So that's going to be false. And the delay time, again, zero. No delay is needed because it's not going to repeat itself. Right, once I've done that, I'm going to create the tween. So, local tween. And this is the animation where we tell it what we want to change, what we want to animate. So tween equals tween service, colon create. We want to animate the camera, which we've set as a variable already. And we, we now need to give it the tween info. Oops, tween info variable like this. So make sure it doesn't go blue. And then the last thing we need to do is give it a table. And this table will contain all of the properties of the camera, which we're going to change. And we're going to change it C frame. So say C frame equals C frame dot new. And inside of this, we're going to set it to the, we want it to be looking at the pet. So pet clone. And because you can't get the position of a model, we have to get its primary part position, which is why I said earlier, make sure that you set the primary part of each pet to be the hitbox. So pet clone dot primary part. And I'm going to zoom out a bit here. Pet clone dot primary part dot position. But because we need to be a few studs out so we can actually see it because the position is in the middle of the pet, we need to say plus and then in brackets we'll say pet clone dot primary part dot C frame dot look vector because look vector is a property of the C frame. Let's just give a bit of space here. Uh, look vector uh, times five. So it will be the direction, the forward direction multiplied by five studs. So it's going to position the camera five studs from the pet. Okay, so we can actually look at it. And then we want it to also be positioned a couple of studs higher. 
so we can actually get a nice view of it from the top down. So I'm going to add on vector3.new 0, 0, 0.75, 0. So we're going to add on around about 0.75 studs to this so that it's just above the pet looking down on the pet. Uh, then the second argument, uh, which is after the comma, is going to be what it's looking at. And we want it to look at the pet. So we want it, we want it to look down at the pet's position. So the second argument will be pet clone dot primary part dot position. C frames are definitely confusing if you're new to them, but I am having a, a video put up on my channel this week about how to use them. So I recommend checking it out. What this will do though, is it will position the camera to be looking at the pet just from slightly higher, slightly higher up so you can see the top of it as well. So it will be looking down at it. So the first uh, piece of data we gave to it, the first position is telling the camera where to be positioned. So just, um, just five studs out from the pet, but looking but 0.75 studs above it. And the second position here is where it will be facing. So it's going to face the pet. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can play the tween. So we can say tween colon play, and that will animate the camera to be looking at it. Then we can wait um, some time. So maybe delay five seconds, wait five. And then we can reset everything back to normal. So we can say um, camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot custom. So it can go back to looking at the player. Uh, we can set the studio egg transparency back to zero so it can be used for next time. And we also want to reset the studio egg size back to normal because don't forget we've made it bigger. So studio.egg.size equals vector three dot new. And the original size of the egg, if you look in the studio, it is 4.732 comma six comma 4.732. So this might be different for you. So change it if you wish. We then need to destroy the pet clone. Um, because this isn't the actual pet, it's just the pet that we are showing on your screen to show which pet you got. Uh, and then, oh, last thing, we need to disable the particle emitter. So I'm going to copy this code. Again, you don't need to add this if you don't have any confetti. But basically the same thing. I'm going to set the enabled property to be false. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out. Um, so let's just double check. We call the hatch egg uh, fire client from the server. So that's telling our specific player because we 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 had that we input the player that we're going to fire this for so we can pick it up on the local script and um, you know do all this great um, stuff to show the the pet that you've got anyway let's go and test it out we're gonna click on play here and wait for it to load and then if you click on the egg oh look hopefully it works the egg gets bigger and there's an explosion and uh, it works, but the only thing that doesn't is the camera movement. So let's see what happens here. We have a slight error. It says, unable to cast to dictionary on line 56. So we'll just check that out. Go to line 56. And okay, it's to do with our uh, tween. Let's just check this out. Oh, I know. It's because we've forgotten a closing bracket, I believe. Uh, yes, we've actually we've put one before our second position when it should actually be at the end there. So this, this does look a bit confusing. I will just add some spaces to try and make it a little bit easier to read. So we've got the uh, first bracket for when for the tween service create, which we're ending here. We've then got the uh, squiggly bracket for our properties. We're changing the C frame. And then the we've got the uh, other close the other bracket pair for the C frames here, which we're closing there. So that was just a typo on my end. We click on the play button again. And let's see if it will work this time. So the egg gets bigger and boom, it animates the camera to be looking at our pet. And there we go. After a couple of seconds, it resets. And this time it's the B, so it should have reset. And this time we get a B. So excellent. So that is awesome. I've just shown you how to make an egg hatching system on Roblox. In my next video, I'll be showing you how to add an inventory so you can uh, equip, unequip your pets and also how to save them. So look out for that video. If you're new on my channel, make sure that you subscribed and click the like button so, you, so I know that you've enjoyed them. And don't forget to also check out my 2020 uh, beginner scripting series. It will work uh, in the future as well. So it's not just 2020, but it will teach you how to script on Roblox, especially if you found this video a little bit confusing. Do stick with it because uh, I'm sure you'll be able to learn how to script. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.